Main man, main man here. Y'all know how I get down. We talking boxing. Yo, I wanted to get this video in before Monday Night Football comes on because I have to get this out here, man. I just want everyone to know from this point forward until things change, I am no longer, I repeat, I ain't no longer on the Adrian Bronner hype train. It stops today. I cannot condone what Adrian Bronner is doing in the sport of boxing right now. Reason being, because me as a fan, I see this as cowardly, what Adrian Bronner is doing. And, and I don't use that word lightly when describing fighters and boxers. He, at this present day, September 9th, 2016, I'm sorry, September 12th, 2016, Adrian Bronner is being a coward. Simple and Simon. You know, Adrian Braun is a dynamic fighter. Don't get me wrong. I think it's in him. People don't understand something, man. The reason I started doing videos in the first place, I started uploading videos. The very first fight that I reported and talked about was Adrian Bronner versus Marcos Maidana. The video still stands. Yes, that is me with that big ass curly bush. But the video still stands. Go back through my archives and look it up. It's the very first video I've ever done. And I got on here to talk about it because I was impressed with Adrian Bronner at that time. What he had did at the lighter weights. And I have been following Adrian Bronner. And when he got up to welterweight and he defeated Paulie for the belt and then he lost to McDonough, man, I took it so hard that I had to talk about it. And so I did. And I was rolling with Bronner. So Bronner was my number one inspiration for getting up on here and talking the sport of boxing with y'all. Real talk. And now today, Bronner has turned me off because I can't condone what the dude is doing, man. Last time we heard from Bronner, man, Adrian Bronner stated that he could not make 140 anymore. When he fought eight, nine loss, having as Ashley Theophane. And at the time, Adrian Bronner was a world champion. He had the WBA super title at 140. And he could not make weight against fucking Ashley Theophane. And so he said that he did everything he could. He shitted out every ounce. He pissed out everything that was in him. He had no fluids going through his body. He had an eight in days at that point. He just could not. They even gave him chances to walk off the scale, go in the back, give him, what, an hour or so, go sit in a sauna, do something, and come back. Adrian Bronner could not make weight, ladies and gentlemen. And so, you know, he said that he was going to go up to welterweight. Well, here we are today. And Adrian Bronner's now talking about going down back down to 140 to possibly face Ricky Burns. And I guess to get his old title back. And my thing is, well, why ain't you going to welterweight? Adrian Bronner's. Weight issues has been screwed up, man, ever since he left 135. He left 135, he skipped 140, he went to 147 with a 140 body. Got his ass handed to him at 47, comes back down to 40, in which he has now grew into a welterweight size, and now he's trying to squeeze his ass back down to 140. Take in mind, you know, I have rolled with Brona through his bad decision makings, through his level of opposition, through the way he fought against Sean Porter like a gump, and I would have eaten anyone else. How he he was so afraid of Sean Porter, it seemed like. Go back and watch that, and he didn't get hot to the last round. You know what I'm saying? I could have eaten Bronner for so many reasons, but the whole world was against this kid. And no one could figure this kid out. A kid who came from nothing. No one could figure him out. Everyone said he had to do it a certain way. And he did it his way. And he became an entertaining, ticket-selling dude. And for that reason, everybody said, let's give Adrian Bronner passes. Because he's entertaining. He sells tickets. Blah, 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 blah. Right? Even I did it. I even applauded Bronner for building his own brand, AB. And... By doing such, I turned a blind eye, just like everybody else. I turned a blind eye to the level of opposition and the real criticism that could have came Adrian Bronner's way. 
Like, for example, when he left 147 after losing to McDonough, goes back to 140, he fights the bum club of the fucking year. He goes through John Molina, little John Molina. He goes through Emmanuel Taylor. He goes through the other John Molina. Oh, and let's not forget my own favorite here, Khabib Alok Verdiv for the WBA regular championship. Let's never forget that one, right? That's the level of opposition. No Matisse, huh? Right? No Victor Postal. No Terrence Crawford. And I am fully aware of the politics that impede those fights. But guess what? I don't think he would afford him anyway. I don't think he would afford him anyway. Adrian Bronner, man, believe it or not, has been getting the easy fucking ride since the McDonald loss. And that shit stops with me, man, because now that you are going to try to kill yourself to make your natural, so, so you won't fight at your natural weight, which is 147, I just cannot condone it for no reason given. All because the level of opposition that sits at welterweight, no one can see Adrian Bronner beating nobody there. You can walk up to some people who really know the sport and ask them, and I'm not going to give my opinion on this, does Adrian Bronner beat Robert Guerrero? What the fuck do you think most people answer would be? To be quite honest with you, I just don't know. And I can't condone that no more, man. I can't condone that no more. When we are sitting around, you got people out here picking on fighters that have proven themselves beyond measure, a la Gennady Golovkin, and we allow Adrian Bronner to just float around and be A.B., well, that shit stops with me. If A.B. want to win me back, he got to have a big win. I don't even remember A.B.'s last big win. Real talk. I vouched for the Theophane fight because I thought it was going to lead to a A.B. versus TMT or A.B. versus Mayweather something. Something. A.B. was finally taking control and being coming to man and getting rid of Floyd Mayweather. He challenged him. But then in the days later, after he called out Mayweather to the world, he kind of started becoming a little timid about it. Oh, well, you know, I don't want to fight him, but I'll spar him. Oh, no, I don't want to spar him, but I'll, I'll, we can wrestle. We can we can play a game of double dribble. I, I don't know. But, you know, I don't want to. We can play some tic-tac-toe together or something. Man, what kind of shit? So it, it's now, in my eyes, becoming a joke. So if Adrian Broner is not going to keep up the, the horse and pony show, then you're going to have to fight. And you're going to have to fight somebody worth mentioning. I don't want to hear no Ricky fucking Burns. Nothing to Ricky Burns. I personally don't want to hear Adrian Bronner going back to 140. Because then what happens? All right? He starts to go back through those lower tier fighters all over again. And if he stay at those weights too low or weights too long, he's going to end up running to his boy Robert Easter Jr. But I'm not going to go there. I'm just saying. Adrian Bronner needs to step his ass up to welterweight. Stop being a biatch. And go up there and get your respect. Fuck, man. You got Al Heyman in your corner. He can make any of those fucking fights. But Adrian Bronner wants to go back down to a weight that he gave up his world title to, 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 to make. He couldn't make that weight. He hit a brick wall. But evidently that brick wall must have got towed down, ladies and gentlemen. Because Adrian Bronner is right back. Like cook crack. And it's sad, man. I said because I really wanted the Bronner to go up there. You know, that Danny Garcia poster. Remember that one time? I don't know who fight was that. When uh, Adrian Bronner and Danny Garcia was like on the same panel at the same time. And uh, they didn't call each other out to their faces. It was a bunch of shit talking behind the scenes here and there when, when they were far apart from each other. But when they were right there, that showed everybody right then and there wasn't going to happen. Wasn't going to happen. We friends, but you know. <laughs> the poster goes around. Danny Garcia slicing his neck. Adrian Braun on the other side. They in suits and shit. Man, ain't none of that happened, man. That shit was awful fucking show, man. And I'm sick of it. So Adrian Braun has things to prove from here on out. Because the last, uh, let's see, outside of the Sean Porter fight, which was his own, which was his big opportunity, you know, they protected him after that. Even after he lost to Sean Porter and he disrespected Porter, wouldn't shake his hand. They, Al Heyman still protects Adrian Bronner. Adrian Bronner is running out of options and the walls are going to eventually close in on Bronner. And he's going to have to prove. But this time, the stakes are now 50 times higher because the next big fight that Adrian Bronner loses, Adrian Bronner ends up on ESPN Friday Night Fights. And I don't even know if that still exists. No disrespect to ESPN. But I'm just saying, though, man, Adrian Bronner needs to step it up or shut the fuck up. 
Because I'm tired of the horse and pony bullshit. It's time to prove. Real talk. To the next video, Main Man Made Man. Don't forget to subscribe. Twitter, Made Man 511. Facebook, Main Man Made Man Boxing Forum. Google Plus, Main Man Made Man. I'm just saying, man, why I'm, you know, when I heard that news, man, I just was like, huh? I was just kind of stuck for real. Like, why? Okay, why? You're going back after the title that you basically lost on the scales because you couldn't make the weight. So this time around, you're going to make the weight, right? You're going to kill yourself to make the weight, right? All just to prevent your ass from going to welterweight. You tell me the word for that. To the next video. Peace out.